Hello everyone, today we're going to be watching some more Legend of Korra. We're still in season one, but we're making our way towards the end of that. We have a couple more episodes to go. Today is going to be episode 11, Skeletons in the Closet. The last couple episodes were really, really intense, but especially the last episode when Amon and the Equalists attacked in a very big way. They basically took over the city, I think. Um, all the council members are captured or gone. I'm not sure where Tarlock is um, after his bending got taken away, but his bending got taken away, so he can't really fight back as far as we know. And Tenzin is gone and Lin lost her powers. Everything is in disarray and, well, who knows where things are going to go from here. I'm really excited, so let's dig in and get to it. Thank you guys for watching, hope you enjoy, and see you guys in the comments, okay? He has declared bending illegal! And he has the Avatar on the run! <gasps> they put a mask over Aang's... Mm. One day soon, bending will no longer exist, and we will live in what a world mean, where bending everyone will is no longer exist? equal! Mon's gonna take away everyone's bending, is that his plan? Can you believe, Hiroshi? The Avatar's on the run. I'm not running from anyone. General Iroh's coming with an entire fleet of battleships. Then Amon will be the one who's running. You two were gone a while. We were doing reconnaissance. Whatever. Welcome back! Oh, this guy. <laughs> Thanks so much for letting us hide out with you the past few days. Honored to oblige. This is the best tasting streak rule I've ever had. Seriously. I culled it from the finest dumpsters the city has to offer. Oh, yeah. I would be questioning it, too. I feel really bad for her right now. A few months ago, I was in the South Pole practicing for my firebending test. And now I'm in the middle of an all-out war. I know. We didn't even know each other then. And now, I can't imagine my life without you in it. Did he... Did he and Asami break up officially or like I should probably try to get some sleep because like he is totally acting like Asami just doesn't exist or matter or anything and you will now be cleansed of your impurity. <laughs> Next. Dang, so they really are just... It reminds me of Order 66 in Star Wars. But they didn't take away Jedi powers, they just killed them all. And then the Jedis had to go into hiding and now Benders are gonna have to go... Hmm. Amon had to know we were coming. So why aren't we meeting any resistance? A trap? It's a trap. <laughs> they underwater? It's a trick. That's not good. What is that sound? Uh oh. And now here they come. Well, there goes General Iroh's forces. Not much Korra can do for this. That is so cool! Ooh, nice! Well, she got one! Ooh. Okay. I stand corrected. There are some things she can do. She is the Avatar, after all. I'm trying to figure out if Iro here is too... Hold on. Uh-oh. Uh too young to be Zuko's son. He seems a lot younger than Tenzin. But if he's like a grandson, he seems too old. 
Maybe, I don't know. Avatar Korra, you saved my life. Thank you. I was prepared to deal with Sato's mecha tanks, but not these new high speed aircraft. A second wave of reinforcements is on the way, but I need to warn them. And who is the recipient of this top secret message? Commander Boomy. Tenzin's brother? Yes. <gasps> Boomy, Tenzin's brother. Aang's other son. Aang and Katara, of course. <laughs> Do not approach city until you receive the all clear. We need to ground those aircraft. Otherwise, Boomy's fleet will never be able to retake the city. We leave at dawn. Wait, I'm not going with you tomorrow. I'm sick and tired of hiding from Amon. It's time I face him. No, this, I don't think it's the time. My gut's telling me it's time to end this on my terms. I'm going with you. <sighs> my grandfather would respect the Avatar's instinct. Grandfather, okay. He's gotta be the son then. A uh, grandson, sorry. <laughs> Korra, Amon is a nasty dude. Be careful. I will. Asami, I'm sorry things got so messed up between us. I want you to know how much I care about you. I care about you too. Man, it's like, it's over between them. We need to get into the temple. Then, when he returns, we ambush him. They're just so outnumbered. What are you two doing here? Oh. Uh, we were just transferred. Well, you're getting transferred again. Amon wants extra security at the arena today. I know another way in. Uh, we're not alone up here. Tama? I was wondering what happened to this guy. Are there other prisoners on the island? I'm the only one. And what makes you so special? I'm Amon's brother. Ah. Okay. Okay. He's a waterbender and a bloodbender, just like I was. He is a Amon is a bender. I had a feeling. It all began with my father, Yakon. Oh, we're getting the backstory. Yes, this is so good. He escaped prison and underwent surgery to change his appearance and settled down in the Northern Water Tribe. That's where he met my mother. Amon was the firstborn under the name Noatak. Noah Tuck was a good-natured kid. Those were the good years. Before my brother and I discovered we were waterbenders, that our training brought out a different side of my father. Tarlock! My brother wanted everyone to be treated fairly and equally. Equally. Our family has the strongest line of bloodbenders in history, and I will teach you to master it. When the time is right, you will claim Republic City, and you will destroy the Avatar. The good days were behind us. So Amon had the most, one of the most dangerous and feared. Stop! You're hurting it! Toughen up, Tarlock. Bending powers. And I think his maybe kindness was like, this isn't right Very and this shouldn't son. exist. And he became kind of fanatical against later, bending in general. taught us to blood bend any time. We practiced constantly. And I hated every minute of it. My brother, however, seemed to revel in his newfound power. Okay, that's not what I was expecting. The loving brother I once knew became cold and detached. And one day, he made us blood bend each other. What? No attack. Go. I'm just trying to figure out Tarlock. how Your Amon turn. turned into no. Amon. I won't do it. That felt awful. I don't want to do that to anyone. I'll teach you a lesson, you insubordinate. Oh, how dare you blood bend me? You're the weak one. You always say blood bending is the most powerful thing in the world. The Avatar is. He took your bending away. What could be more powerful than that? We can run away from him. 
Forever. Run away? But what about Mom? You are a weakling. No, it's off! Don't leave! Please! So does he just want to be the most powerful person that nobody can stop? If he takes away everyone's bending, and he's the only one who can bend, sign of no attack. then he would be the ultimate I ruler. In that storm. My father stopped training me, and he passed away a few years later. That's one of the saddest stories I've ever heard. I thought I was better than my father. I became a soldier of revenge, just like he wanted me to be, and so did my brother. I think Amon truly believes bending is the source of all evil in the world. So, he somehow uses blood bending to take people's bending. I don't know how he does it. How does that work? If we stay here, we're toast. But there's another way to beat him. How? If we expose him as a bender in front of all his supporters... At the rally. We could take away his true power. And undermine this whole revolution. But how are they going to do that? We can't just leave him here. Go. Amon can't know anyone spoke with me. Defeat him. Put an end to this sad story. So, both Tarlock and Amon... Oh shit, it's over? What? I know his name is no Noah talk. I don't even remember. So I'm just going to keep calling him Amon for right now. But both Tarlock and Amon are kind of victims of their father Yakon's brutality. And even though it seems like they both tried to not become their father, they both kind of did in a way. So Amon saw this power that could be used to overtake anybody who's weaker than it and the last time we saw him in that flashback he seemed like he was very much all for that but if he sees that power as evil he must have had a change of heart somewhere along the line where he saw what he had become and how he felt powerful when he was bloodbending other people and at some point said you know what this is wrong and bending is wrong and it's all gotta go because Tarlock had said that he had always just ever since he was young wanted people to be treated as equals thus the equalists are born so he saw that power Created by bloodbending corrupts, but I guess what he doesn't understand is power can come in all forms, not just bending. So if he takes away all bending, that doesn't get rid of evil, that doesn't get rid of corruption, that doesn't get rid of the allure or the intoxication of being someone who is more powerful than someone else, because there will always be people that are stronger physically, intellectually than others and will feel that kind of superiority and that can snowball into becoming what Yakon became, becoming what Amon tried to keep himself from becoming when he discovered that he was being pulled in by this power and it was changing him. I don't know. I'm just, I don't know what's going to happen. I still don't know the full story about Amon and what's going on in his head and what happened after he took off and nobody saw him again. That was some much needed background and information and answers to a lot of my questions that I really, really was excited to get. And ooh, this story is just getting better and better and better. I think that trying to take on Amon right now is... It's a bit preemptive. I think it's very dangerous. And I know Korra is impatient. And I know she really just wants to get in there and do something. I don't think this is the right time. The only reason that Aang was able to defeat Yakon when he did was because he was able to take away his bending. And Korra does not have that power. Korra is not as strong as Aang was. She still has a lot of growing and learning. She hasn't even mastered all four of the elements. And 
Yakone was by himself and and Amon has a whole following. He has an army. He has weapons, machinery, and she has no plan. <laughs> well, now she's starting to get a plan, but I don't know. Anyways, at least their plan is not to go up to him and just try to take him out. Because that didn't work last time. But she can say who Amon is. How is she going to prove it? It's her word against his. Still doesn't seem like this is really well thought out. But we'll see in the next episode. I can't wait. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.